Okay, today in episode number 61 of the Piezo Talk Show, we're going to be talking about how do you use a long-range microscope to measure ultrasonic uh, transducer displacement. In the last few videos, I showed some demonstrations um, using a um, uh, using kind of a USB, like cheap microscope, which works well if you use it well. Uh, but uh, when you're getting, when you're wanting to have higher accuracy, a better system, more functionality, ease of use, then um, you can purchase a uh, long range microscope. And I talked a little bit about that in the last video, uh, but today I'd like to specifically demonstrate uh, one of them and just how to use it, what to expect. Uh, this is a specific one I bought uh, and I have, uh, which is actually purchased uh, as a Chinese company and they kind of provide all the optics and the camera itself so you know the system works, which is important for me, um, not to kind of have to uh, design the optics from the ground up, although there are not too many components. Um, also, it's not expensive. Now, inexpensive is not necessarily mean cheap. Um, and it actually depends on what you're using it for and uh, what's important to you. Uh, so going with a vendor um, from a more reputable brand, it's very important for companies who are doing production uh, style operations where they need traceability, they need product support. Uh, but in terms of uh, making measurements, um, being flexible, um, like I am in my consulting company, I don't I don't do production stuff. I, I do research and I calibrate my equipment uh, and, and, and validate it accordingly. And um, for um, so it's perfect for my needs and maybe perfect for yours, especially in the research setting or definitely to get started to see what's possible. Like, can you actually measure displacement on my transducer? That's a question you'd like to answer, let's say, before you invest in uh, a system where the camera costs 10 times as much as this entire system itself or even more. And you're not sure what settings to use and what things to buy. So it's it's a great purchase there. So what I'm going to do. Uh, let's jump to the camera here. I'm going to show that system. It's like a, uh, nope, you don't want that one. We're going to look for the camera that I have here. Okay, that's okay. There we go. Well, oh, there's me too. So how about that? Um, so what I'd like to show you is the camera itself. And it's a little bit crooked, but okay. We're at it. All right, so there's the camera. All right, um, there's the optics. It's kind of long. There's me right there. Um, here's a here's here's a couple of setups. So I'm going to actually walk you through a little bit here um, and show you what this looks like. So there's a HDMI output, so you can do it directly to a monitor. Um, that's really not important and necessary uh, because you can use USB, but the USB has lower output signal you could say i mean i mean it has a lower resolution uh hdmi has a high resolution but in order to get that resolution to the computer and not just directly to a monitor you're going to have to use it a dvi hdmi capture card here like something like this which which will which will allow these two things to connect and this will would this will plug into your computer like a webcam however this also is limited to the same output a resolution as the usb so i might as well use us use the usb for now but um this is um, kind of a scientific or industrial camera. You, um, there's a bunch of settings here and buttons. That's only relevant when you're using HDMI. When you're actually using the USB output, it is not, uh, it's not gonna work. Uh, it, these, these buttons don't work and they don't do anything. Um, you'll see here, it's a, it's a beautiful product made in China, because why not? Um, and there is a kind of a hole here that you can probably use to attach this to other structures. Um, you have this, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a kind of attachment lens there. There's this tube, which gives you the long range capability that you don't have to get right up to the microscope in order to do that measurement. Um, there's a zoom function right there. So right now I have it set at something like one, but you can set it at 0 0.7. I think, can you see it here? Yeah, there it is, 0 0.7. And you can rotate it all the way up to four times. Um, I've looked at the resolution and it is uh, about uh, two pixels per micron. Uh, so that's about what you're getting there. Um, there is, in this specific device, there's, there's a couple of other ones that come with stands. I like the ones that come with stands, obviously, because you can use it right away. Um, 
So there is a knob here you can go ahead and uh, uh, do use it for focusing. So focusing is kind of annoying with these products. Um, and this is a kind of a adjustment uh, from a, a gross adjustment. So we're actually having about five, four inches of distance between our target, and this is kind of already pre-focused between our target transducer and our uh, uh, and our actual uh, uh, microscope, which which doesn't allow these same things to bang together. And, um, and one thing that this specific system won't come with is a stand. Is, is, is stages. So I, I talked about in the last video, uh, stages, um, which, uh, which if you buy like an optical uh, a breadboard and you get those specific stages, they'll be very precise and nice, but that's not really what you need. You need, you're, all, you're, all you're trying to do is get this thing in focus. You're not trying to inch it forward, you know, a tenth of an inch or, or, or a hundredth of an inch uh, very precisely. You're just trying to get it in focus or in, in the image. So this, uh, milling stage, which is which is actually quite inexpensive, I glued it to this to the base that came with the camera, um, and uh, it actually provides an easy way for me to for me to get the uh, tip of the transducer into the um, image of the camera. Um, I also have this kind of stand here, which is um, probably not necessary in this case because you do have uh, you know your camera knob. Uh, but uh, but if I needed to use it, I, I would, and this provides another platform. Um, in this case, I was kind of like, I could have put this on foam. How you hold the transducer is important, um, but right now I just glued it on kind of with hot, <laughs> hot glue, just so it wouldn't move around. It, it's kind of a, it's kind of not, uh, not, I, I would say it's not an, not the best solution, but you know, I'm trying to get measurements here and do demonstrations. Um, I didn't make an actual holder for this transducer. I could have used it, you know, if I didn't disassemble the transducer completely, I could have used the holder that came, let's say the plastic casing and how it, how it attaches and how it go, hooks onto the O-ring and compresses the kind of transducer between two ends, uh, but uh, I didn't. So there you go. Uh, this milling table is also nice because you can use any type of like holder and you can just simply, if you wanted to get, if you want, some stability. Um, let me just loosen this up a little bit. Um, you can just attach it there. So this is like, this works quite well. Uh, probably a system 20 to 30 times more expensive would not provide a better result because focusing is really annoying uh, with these um, devices here. And if you wanted to do a horizontal arrangement, let's say, because you want to do underwater, so you have you want you want this camera not to be up and down, but you want it to be side to side, you can probably use this. Um, you can you can you, you know use this holder part or, or the screw, and you you, you still have um, arrangements that you can provide, and probably hook this whole pole, pole sideways or something, and and still have support for the for the device. But it just it just it's just not out of the box because this is meant for uh, um, inspection purposes. Um, so without further ado, so I'm going to actually, I'm going to leave this camera open. I hope I can run like all these cameras at the same time. Um, let's, let's go, let's try it. So here, um, I already have my image in focus. So you see, there's not much light here. So I can just, um, I'll just actually put this there and put this there. It's not perfect, but life isn't perfect, bro. Um, um, so I'm just going to adjust so you can see this adjustment happening on the screen. OK, there you go. So there I have it. Um, and I can move this. I can move this part. So now watch. I'm demonstrating everything for you guys. I'm moving it, and it's moving up and down. And it's shaking a bit. And well, you could work on that in different ways. Um, this, prob this, this, st this stand right here is probably not the best for this. but as long as you don't really move when you're doing measurements, it's going to be okay because you don't want this shaking to be thought as stroke. That's not something you want. It probably has something to do with, this, with, these, with these like glue points I put in. Um, this is demonstration, guys. Um, I'm, no, nobody's paying for paying this, paying me for this in this specific demonstration. Uh, you you got to make sure things are good for for that kind of work. And then I have this other knob here, which is going to get me. The other direction. Now, this direction is not as as long, but it's still like much more than you would find in any other of those other stages. Uh, for and this is extremely inexpensive, but 
kind of embarrassed how inexpensive it is, but if it works, well, then you use it and you can calibrate these devices so you don't have to worry about their accuracy. Um, so that's our transducer there. Now, I'll get into, well, I want to get it focused. I want to keep it, get, get more focused. So I'm just going to, sorry, not focus, so zoom, zoom in. So once I zoom in, the focus gets disturbed, then I realign it. Then you zoom in. This is, a, this is the kind of standard way of doing it, and you realign it. And right now, you got the drill. So I'm just going to maximize the screen here so I can actually get the, and then I'm going to use the knobs here. Okay, that's not going the right way. That's going down. I want to get it in the center. That's what my program actually likes too. Okay, perfect. Okay. And now I'm going to, you, so you, you zoom, you focus, you zoom, you focus. The, the awesome thing about this is that once you have calibrated this thing one time, you never have to do it again. And that's what I love. Um, about uh, getting the right because once the because the, the focus range is so small that if you're in the focus you have that so now these are the spots that you'll see um, these right here that you'll want to do the measurements on. Um, I have this light that's right there like a lamp so i'm going to turn that lamp off. And now it's completely dark. Um, i'm going to use this light I have right here. Um, to. And you can actually use. This this tip, the tip portion. I think I'll show it in this camera. This this tip portion, and I will put this to the side. Hopefully, zoom out a little bit. Maybe maybe if I can uh, scrunch that over, that would be helpful. Yeah, I can. I can zoom back in. That's good. Actually, perfect. Um. Okay. Now I'm going to just hover around and see what I can get. So I'm going to put this, actually, let's do this here. I'm going to put this right there. Is that going to help me? Is that going to give me something good? So that's what the light is, as you can see. Um, and this is how, so it's kind of up to you whether you want to Okay, this is this good enough or not? Or you know, you focus obviously keep that get that focus in there. Is that going to provide a good spot? Um, that's something. This is part of this. Part of this is something you might actually want to do during the process of. Uh, and this is a curved surface, so it's not all like one 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 point one spot here. So we're not exactly always looking at the edge. That looks actually pretty good. Okay, well, let's get that. That looks good. So we'll have, probably have some good places to do measurements on this type. And we'll just, again, focus it a little bit just to see if we can get any better. Sometimes you want like a unique, unique spot. Um, but yes, um, now I want to go ahead. So I've, I've actually focused the image. Um, what you can do for calibration, I mentioned those optical slides. This this ruler will also work, like the millimeter. Um, I'll just store, show it in here. Um, we have millimeters, uh, but this whole entire window is one millimeter actually at this point. So it's uh, 1920 pixels per millimeter uh, actually. So that's actually pretty. Um, you probably would want something that fits entire in the entire screen, but I'm just going to assume that that's the, the ratio, 1900 pixels per thousand microns, uh, which makes two pixels per micron, oh, 0 0.5 microns per pixel. Um, so uh, let's go here. And I wanted to show you the stroke measurement. So, uh, and I also want to go over how I set everything up according to uh, my system. So, hey, you can replicate it. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, so I have this function generator there and the, amp and the uh, power supply, bipolar power supply. And I mentioned this in a couple other videos so you can reference back. And then I have my uh, um, measurement system here. I have my oscilloscope. Um, I have my amplifier. I have my transformer uh, and I have this output, which I will uh, demonstrate. And I've, I've described this in other videos, but I'll, today I will just demonstrate how I just set, how I started. 
because if you don't start it properly, and I added a couple other things. I added these uh, kind of resettable, polymer resettable fuses. Um, I think they're one amp. Um, so to limit the current, uh, because the amplifier gets sometimes unstable, uh, which is not good, that which means it burns out and draws too much current. Uh, so uh, what, what I basically do usually is I go to the, the function generator. So, so I'm kind of done demonstrating perhaps what the uh, amp, what the, what what's going to happen with the uh, uh, with the zoom, with the focusing, and with the camera setup. Uh, but now I'm just show you how I how I practically set it up. The resonant frequency is something like 26 kilohertz or so. So I will just uh, zoom out there, and then I'll set it to 26 kilohertz, or tw I'll say 20 kilohertz, because you don't want you don't want to be running all this whole this whole system right here with uh, you don't want to be running this whole system while uh, what do you call while you are um, you're running a really low frequency because that that sometimes pushes a lot of current through. So after setting to 20 kilohertz. Uh, which is definitely not resonant. Then I'm going to set the voltage really low, like the 10 milli, 10 milli volts peak to peak. All right. Then I'm going to turn. Let's focus on the. Can it focus there? Then I'm going to turn the output on. So now it's outputting and it's outputting, and these two cables here go to the amplifier input. Then I will turn this on. So we notice that we're not running a lot of current, so that's good because we're, it's, it's 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 off right now. We should not be running. I mean, it doesn't have much voltage. Um, then let's run the the picoscope software. Well, actually, I'll turn this off because I haven't hooked up my transducer yet. Um, so let me just move this closer, so I can easily hook in my transducer to this structure. And apologize for. For any wait, any delay time in your viewing pleasure that you're not that you're waiting for me to unscrew something, but if you're watching this so far, you are dead interested and you will you will love what every you love everything I say and do because because it's it's free money practically. You'd have to figure it all this out by yourself and maybe get frustrated in the process. So let's relieve some of that frustration. And uh, you might have to wait for me to screw something in while I am demonstrating something. This video editing takes a long, long time. Uh, but sharing, it doesn't take too long. Sharing is not too hard. OK. Uh, so that's all plugged in. Um, I'm also going to run the Pico scope. I, I use the that USB oscilloscope I have, so I'm going to run that program. I'm going to shut this off because I actually because that that oscilloscope is going to it might take actually it's, it'll be okay. You know, running too many things on. I have two cameras and a Zoom recording as well as what what else a, a USB oscilloscope. So this is kind of overloading the laptop here in terms of. Uh, uh, USB processing, but um, we must make the video. We must. And I know my I know my setup. I have ten x I have ten x probes. Um, and I have a one, I have a one one milli ohm resistor. So um, uh, sorry, one ohm resistor on the ground side. So that provides the current measurement. And let's uh. Let's go ahead and turn on the power there, and we have two volts uh, beautifully running. I at least want to get that higher to, let's say, 50 volts peak to peak. OK, that's, that's plus or minus 50 volts. Um, that should be enough. I'm going to go back to the camera. As you see here, the current is now higher than it was before. Why this is not balanced, I, I won't be able to tell you. But um, and we have a little bit of current, so that's good. We're, the current is in range, uh, and it's one for one pretty much. So voltage is current, um, and I can even change the probe here to. I don't know if you can change it to a one x current probe, but uh, um, I don't know if that's uh, 
that's a thing. Anyways, no problem. I'll, I just know I know it's voltage. So I will actually do some measurements here just so I have them. ACRMS is good and add measurement channel B ACRMS. And another thing that's quite going to be important for us is channel A frequency, just so you can see that on the screen. C37 volts RMS. Let's now go, and I'm going to be changing the, the frequency now. Uh, frequency. And I'm going to change that to 26. I'm basically going to try to locate a resonance by looking at where the current is going to spike for me. Okay. Okay, let's see. I think it was in the 30s. I, I think I'm thinking of a different device. I think it was like in the third. There you go. There you go. There you go. It has, you have to kind of get. Okay, that's it. That's one. And let me just uh, change this uh, time scale here. And let me just kind of get as close as I can on that resonance here. It's not too sharp of a resonance, and I'm sitting on. Honestly, the holder is not all the best, but let's go back to our image here. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to show you guys something here. Now a couple of things are shaking, but I'm going to put this here. Actually, I'm going to I'm going to do this. Um, watch the screen. 36 volts. Let's let's pump it up a little bit. That's not enough voltage for me, man. That's not enough voltage for for for, for a dude like me. All right, 56 volts RMS, um, 70 volts RMS. That's that's a little bit better, and we're okay in terms of. Uh, okay, so let's let's try to get that thing in resonance. So if you see this, so if you see the the the, no, honestly, I'm going to zoom in for you here. And it's shaking a little bit. That's something I just have to work through. Um, it's not really causing a causing a real problem. So if you see that, now there you go. See, look, that's a stroke here. You see, that's a stroke. Um, and that's how you find um, the resonant point. Now, if you get two points, so this is shaking a little bit just because I'm. I think this state is kind of poor, but that's okay right now. We're we're, we're not really. It's not. It is what it is, basically. <laughs> That's all I'll say. So I'm going to actually, like, see, this is 35.5. That, that produces a resonance type of thing. And then as I keep going down, there's, if you remember from a couple of videos ago, there was like two resonant points. So this is like a one at 35.4 kilohertz. And there's another one. See, it, it like changes. It, it, it starts this way, then it goes that way. So there's more than one resonance going on. That's where you get, and there's one at 40 something, if you remember from before. So this is another way to actually find the resonant frequency if you know your voltage. There's one at 40 something. Yeah, there it is. That's a 42. If you see it, it's 42 kilohertz. There's another resonant frequency. So you can technically run this at two resonant frequencies depending on, let's say, Q factor or whatever. So that's the live demonstration of getting some of that stroke. And it's finicky. No, I'm, I'm going in the bio 10 kilohertz. So you see, I'm going a little more precisely and slowly. And the resonant frequency is going to be shifting while I do, I'm do. i doing the measurement. And that's like kind of just uh, honestly just capture it, keep that image still. So I'm not going to show the other. OK, so this is here's. So if you want to just do it like you know straight up measure it in this up uh, in this program here, you would just say, well, that's a prob approximately one there, and that's approximately that there. Um, so I'm just going to stick that there, 
and exit. Uh, that's it. Um, and did I actually do this approximately gets it right? Let's do pixels. So 65 pixels, um, that's about 32 microns. Um, so um, this is the 40x, I guess. I don't, um, but you can set the pixel values and you can do that in other ways. So basically, this is, um, I, I would say, do this in pixels for now. And 65 pixels is about what you're getting. So you're getting about 30 microns out of this side. Um, now, with the image analysis program, you'll get a histogram. Uh, this program itself can't do that. So this is um, move watermark. Profile will do that. Nope. So this is kind of uh, a thing there. Um, I haven't used this profile tool here. Let me just try it again there. Okay, that's it. Okay. So you see these kind of two bumps. That's the histogram. Um, red, blue, green, and black, I guess, is the average part, average of all those, um, or something like that. Um, so I don't think there's a box tool, basically, but that, that it provides a good, a good way of getting the histogram. What my program is going to does is basically uh, get the histogram for you. I think let's try, I don't know if the, it does it does angled boxes. Actually, three points. That's what it is. Okay, let's try that. Well, this is kind of cool, but um, and let's just try histogram. So the, it, basically, the video is over. I'm just trying one feature right now, live, I guess, for your enjoyment. Um, I don't know if it can. This program can do. Uh, Mm, yeah, it doesn't seem like it can do those, those type of uh, measurements there for, but it can do 1D profiles. Um, so yeah, I'll, uh, I, in the, the transducer is still running and I can go back here and check. Okay, exit. Okay. Thank you. Let me, let me go. Let me go. Okay, thank you. All right, so we still have this going on there. It's it's shaking a little bit. That's that's fine. So we can change the lighting. You can get. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna show you what happens when you change light. Um, I'm gonna use. Um, and I'm gonna want to show you on the side. Lighting is is very important. Uh, I don't think I have it nailed for this transducer, but I. I'm doing all right. Like I'm shining it. That's that, see those like this is a full blast kind of kind of deal, just showing you what that would basically do. You can also put the the light under kind of underneath or behind the transducer. That that gives you that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's really good actually. I would actually recommend that to a friend. You know, just stick this here, just like that. You see how I'm sticking that there, and the light's kind of coming off there. And the issue with this camera, I have to mention, is oops, no, going the other way. Go the other way. There we go. The issue with this camera, and you can focus it again, because if you do change the lighting, you just unfocus it. That's really, that is actually really good. Um, you can see there it seems like there's a little bit more. Like, let's freeze this image. Let's capture it. And let's take a look at the end. So the end, let's, this is this part. And we're just going to guesstimate. Like this is. Oh, oops, okay. Let's do the point tool here. Okay, so that's 81 pixels there about. And if we go all the way back to the base here, I'm curious to see if we get a difference in displacement. I don't know. 
that's about 70 pixels. So it's actually pretty even. Um, now, in order to get this to be much more accurate, you would probably need that profile tool. So that's why let's just uh, let's just put that there. Surface plot, and I'm just gonna put that all the way across. And you have you can't necessarily make a drawing on this, can you? I can keep zooming in until it's just actually it's not. You can save it. But it goes from about 17 to 67. Um, so that's 50. And uh, that's less than my count, actually. I counted 10 something. I counted 67. So that's that's why you would need the profile tool instead of just pointing out and picking out the points because the actual middle point of the spot, let's get to that done, is, is not going to be accurate and reliable and it's open to a lot of interpretation depending on your lighting so the issue only issue i have with this camera is that uh, in this system is that you can't adjust the exposure time of the camera um it, it's automatically set so normally in webcams and other types of cameras you can adjust the exposure time here you can't so that's my gripe with it but it's a full system under 300 dollars versus ten thousand probably that you end up paying for for a like a, a name brand system um so i very happy with uh, with that measurement and i'll be actually showing you um uh, how to use my program a little more with these type of images but i hope you enjoyed uh the video you've been watching the piezo shock show uh, episode number 61 how do you use a long-range microscope to measure ultrasonic displacement if you need help with this process let me know uh if you need transducer consulting in any other area, uh, whether it be measurements, transducer development, uh, problem, you know, troubleshooting, root cause analysis, uh, reach out to me. I'm your guy, uh, Hussein Shikani at Ultrasonic Advisors.